you are probably familiar with Nova Centrics as, as our kind of parent company. And we have over the past uh, few months have migrated to, to establish a new division within the company called Pulseforge. So we bring the same innovative team to this foray and we we're working to solve a lot of the problems that um, that people are having with uh, various uh, processing challenges that they're facing. We're based in Austin, Texas, and we always love to host you guys. So if you're ever in, in the Texas area of the United States, come visit us. Um, so we're in the business of delivering light and we use that light to, to heat up or do some work on a different material. And the key that we bring to the table is that we can deliver this, this energy in a very digital manner, in a non, uh, non-contact digital format, whereby we can really target what material we're heating up and we heat it up relatively uh, precisely and, and repeated. So this heating can be done above the thermal equilibrium thermal damage threshold of most materials, enabling us to really get into um, creating value for our customers. Um, this can be uh, attributed, this type of pulsing can be attributed to processing a wide range of different uh, materials. So um, that allows us to really get bring value to a lot of different applications. So these are just some sample applications that we have. But for today's discussion, I want to talk about um, soldering and the ability for us to place components on substrates uh, that have conductive pathways with few flashes of light actually solder that. And the video you see on the left is a uh, normalization of what that's happening, but on the right is actually a live video of how this happens within a two second time scale where the solder melts and the component moves into them. We have a lot of advantages. One of the advantages that's very easily represented in the video is the ability to solder on a non-flat surface, which is very unique because we don't actually have moving air. This also this ability also allows us to really process with with low amounts of thermal input, so we get a very good um, improvement in the energy efficiency of the process, as well as the tools are inherently smaller than the reflow oven, so we get a lot of um, space savings as well for our customers. Here's. To, to really be able to do solder components onto temperature sensitive substrates like PET, we need to have this delta T. So this is a video of how the soldering is happening as, as is measured by a thermal camera. And we can see we have a very, very high uh, ramp rate of the, um, of the component without really damaging the, uh, without really heating up the underlying substrate. So underlying substrate is not damaged. This allows us to really process materials in a wide range of different substrates and different uh, kind of conductive conductors, enabling us to get performance comparable, if not better, than what we get in the reflow. So these are some chip components. These are showing the intermetallic of chip components and, and how they behave. Um, so these are line of sight exposure. We do work with components that don't have line of sight. So these are some examples of QFNs that don't have line of sight exposure and you're able to cure them. So we get really good um, attachment to a, to a similar degree that we would get, achieve in a, in a conventional reflow. Uh, but we can do this on temperature sensitive substrates like PET. So the tools that we have in the field that are able to deliver uh, this performance are, are kind of our small scale pilot line or our small production scale on the left, which you call the batch system, and on the right is our kind of inline system that's MIMO controlled for the process. Um, there are a lot of advantages for this material. Uh, one of the big advantages is that- One minute. 
Yes. Uh, we can take advantage of a lot of ad, a lot of properties that are built into solder paste. So here's an example of these components being misplaced intentionally, and then using the soldering process, we can actually realign them and make it work. Another thing that we we talk about there's no inherent movement to the system, so we we actually get better performance with smaller components. So we don't necessarily have the same limitations in heating up as you would have in a refill process. With that, I would like to thank you for coming here and uh, just give you an example of uh, what we call the leaf design, which is a, a set of LEDs on top of a PET substrate that we, get, we give out at trade shows. So if you uh, run into any of my colleagues in near future trade shows, ask them for one. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for the, uh, for the excellent presentation. Very